Hello my Jason and welcome to my anime review for Fake Khaled Line of Prisma Ilya Thray. And so this is the fourth anime installment of the Fake Khaled series and the third overall in terms of the manga uh, iterations done by the original creator Hiroshi Hiroyama. We have basically the same team back together, same series compositioner, same script writer, same co-directors, and the same chief director in Shin Onoyama. And we pick up where uh, Fake Khaled uh, Tway Hearst left off after the end of the Gil Ilya battle. Uh, they the, the team basically is in vacation mode. They're uh, enjoying their summer vacation. That is until a mysterious figure appears and an incident occurs at Mount Enzo, transporting Ilya to a parallel world in a wintry Fuyuki city. And uh, it's later uh, found out that this is the place that Miyu was raised and born as she is kidnapped by uh, Angelica and uh, Beatrice, uh, two uh, formidable enemies who have used, who are able to use uh, the power of the class cards. Uh, Angelica used the Archer class card, the Gilgamesh to be specific, that sort of motivates Gil's um, motivations as he does join Ilya to get back his class card, become whole again, as he does say. And Beatrice uh, owns the Berserker class card, more specifically the Thor class card. And so these um, two figures become formidable enemies. And Miyu uh, has to team up with a uh, new stranger turned friend in Tanaka, Gil, as I mentioned before, Bazet, and Kuro. After Kuro and uh, Bazet reunite with Ilya in a very emotional uh, reuniting between uh, Kuro and Ilya. They have to work together to uh, take down the Ainsworths as they have captured uh, Miyu to use her uh, because she is um, very similar to Ilya. She is a vessel for the Holy Grail in their world. And so that sort of, you know, it'd be essentially that Miyu is the parallel version of Ilya. And so they, the Ainsworths want to use Miyu to save the world because uh, the big problem in this world and why it's all wintry, all the weather is all messed up and everything else is sort of uh, unbalanced is because magic is dying in this world. And so the Ainsworth, their their plan is to use Miyu as the Holy Grail to bring back magic in this world. And so uh, leading the Ainsworth is uh, Darius and you have um, uh, the daughter of the Ainsworth in Erica, and though those are the villains uh, for this anime series, and we have a pretty, uh, I would say overall good series overall, it, there are some negatives uh, to be had, but still I had an enjoyable time watching this series, there's lots of great moments, but also some moments that kind of dragged a little bit as well. I will say the cool thing about this uh, series is that we have more uh, installs with the class car, especially with uh, Ilya, so she's the only one that can do that, so Miyu out of the picture, we see her using uh, the caster class card, uh, we have her using the lancer cast card, and an assassin class card as well. And you know, later on in the climax, we have her using the saber class card, I mean, she kind of uses it um, during her test with Kuro, because Kuro wants to test out Ilya uh, to make sure she is willing to do whatever it takes in this life-changing battle to save Miyu, because you know, obviously um, Miyu is very precious to Ilya, and Kuro wants to test Ilya to make sure that she has the resolve to do whatever it takes to save Miyu. And you know, she eventually uses the Saber class card in the climax. We have a spoiler here, but I won't reveal too much. What I will say is that the Excalibur scene with um, uh, Ilya, because they do show in the opening theme, so it's not really much of a spoiler there. The her Excalibur scene is one of the best Excalibur scenes in the full whole Fate series in terms of the anime adaptations. Obviously, uh, you bring up the video games, the visual novels uh, into this discussion as well. But for, just for the anime uh, adaptations that we got from the Fate series so far, her Excalibur scene is one of the best. It's I would say it's second behind the Fate Zero Saber Excalibur scene because obviously that's more of the more iconic uh, one. It's so well done with the music and you know the cinematography and just the moment itself. What it means for the character in both situations, in Fate Zero and in uh, Fate Cal 3. Uh, for Ilya, it truly really resembles her resolve for what she's willing to do to save Miyu and all of her friends, and it's really a well-done moment, well-animated moment uh, for Ilya in that Excalibur scene, so it's very much worth the watch uh, just for that scene alone. Just for whole overall aspects of the series itself, it's good, but it's 
not great. That's what's disappointing about this season here because uh, Toy Hearse, uh, it was a lot of slice of life adventures that we got in the previous seasons. Uh, this one here, it's a bit more, we got the slice of life comedy uh, with Gil and Kuro and their uh, dichotomy uh, clashing together and get some other things with Erica as well in her uh, comedic antics but it really shows off the um, the, the psychotic nature uh, within our character and really um, the Ainsworths of themselves. So I, I don't understand that because it's more character uh, driven itself. Uh, Miyu is sort of relegated to a damsel in distress for the most part and so that's kind of disappointing there after seeing uh, Miyu uh, in her growth as a character th through uh, the first fake Khaled series and the sequel and you know after seeing all of that there uh, it's kind of disappointing seeing her as a damsel in distress. Uh, but still, it's still a pretty enjoyable uh, watch overall uh, for the uh, epic storytelling that the Fate series does bring. There's a lot of epic storytelling, especially in the middle parts of the uh, episodes when uh, Ilya has to confront the Ainsworths and really um, fulfill her resolve uh, within herself. You know, the series uh, does a good job at really uh, developing Ilya's character. I will give them credit for that, uh, for Ilya's development as a character to really do what it takes uh, to save the world and save Miyu as well. And the interesting part about the Fate Cal series is the way they adapt uh, the themes of Fate Stay Nights so with all of three routes with the Fate route, Unlimited Blade Works, and the Heaven's Feel routes. You know, the first uh, Fate Khaled series the f does a uh, good job at adapting or at least pr presenting the theme of conquering oneself uh, into Ilya in terms of her uh, really coming into her own as a hero and really uh, understanding um, the role she has as a, coll a Collide uh, liner and really helping out Miyu along the way as well and you know, sort of growing as a magical girl. In the second route, a uh, little bit of play works, you have uh, oneself as an ideal, you know, sort of conquering uh, that there. So the, so the rift between Shiro and uh, Archer. We have that with uh, Ilya and Kuro. We have um, that uh, shown there, mostly the first uh, Tway anime. Tway Hearst uh, kind of goes into some other uh, things there, but we have that adapted very well. And for the, this uh, anime uh, season with Thray, we have uh, the sort of the friction between real and ideal. And so we have Miyu um, and Ilya in that dichotomy there where Ilya has to save Miyu, but she also has to deal with the world being destroyed as well. And so, you know, what can she do? You know, can she have both? And we have that sort of rest between there. You know, obviously some other routes and, you know, sort of those themes and ideas are implemented through each uh, season season of fake Khaled uh, liner, but it still does a good job as really adapting, really making each season their own, but also bringing in elements of the Fate route, the Unlimited Blade Works routes, and the Heaven's Feel routes as well. So I really give the series credits uh, for doing a really good job at doing that. And I can't wait for the upcoming movie to come out, uh, adapting the rest of, at least a part of the Thray uh, arc, where we have a uh, sort of Shiro's story, uh, along with uh, Miyu's uh, backstory as well, getting all that that's in there and really showing a brother's resolve for a sister is basically a whole uh, theme of all that there. It looks really good uh, from the small uh, PVs that we've gotten so far. It looks like they're um, putting a lot of efforts into this and so hopefully their efforts is seen and hopefully their efforts uh, is does, does pay off because uh, again Thray was a bit disappointing. It wasn't as great as it wanted to be. It was still pretty good but still hopefully this movie is fantastic and really uh, continues on the fake Khaled franchise um, further. And so for Rafa's anime season, giving this one a B plus. Lots of great positives uh, with the um, some solid animation uh, for the most part. There's some things that are lacking, uh, mostly the 3D uh, CG stuff. Uh, the character developments of Ilya is very well done and also um, some great uh, moments as well. Some really strong moments that really uh, get, make this series shine uh, much more than Tway Hearst. And you know, so the negatives, you know, some uh, minor things here and there of Miyu's character, and you know, some other um, pacing issues I have with the series. You know, it could be uh, sped up a little bit more. We kind of have some downtime, a bit too much uh, for some of our characters in terms of the bigger plots that's happening of world-ending events. They kind of are a bit lax uh, sometimes as well. And so what do you think about the fourth anime season of Fake Khaled Lighter? Pour your thoughts in the comment section down below. Also make sure to give this video a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel if you have not already. Make sure to hit that notification bell as well to get notified where I post videos on this channel. 
Thank you for watching my anime review for Fate Carolina Prisma Ilya 3. Husband and stay. Bye bye.